A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Sing and rejoice, O daughter Zion. See, I am coming to dwell among you, says the Lord. Many nations shall join themselves to the Lord on that day, and they shall be his people, and he will dwell among you. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. The Lord will possess Judah and his portion in the Holy Land, and he will again choose Jerusalem. Silence all mankind in the presence of the Lord. He stirs forth from his holy dwelling. Ebum Domini. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundo Mateum. While Jesus was speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers appeared outside, wishing to speak with him. Someone told him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside asking to speak to you. But he said in reply to the one who told him, who is my mother, who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my heavenly father is my brother and my sister and mother. Verbum Domini. Last in the Christe. Having been immaculately conceived, Mary was without sin, both in her childhood and in her devout life. Parents, ima imagine raising a child like Mary, who had no sin. She was always obedient when told to do something. She said her prayers, did her chores, 
and even did things without even having to be told. Some of us parents may, may, may think, well, if only I had been the chosen one. <laughs> but it, was, it is often said by, uh, by many spiritual writers that it takes a saint to live with a saint. And the parents of Mary, Saint, uh, Saints Joachim and Anne, would have, of course, had to be saints. Because this child, the Blessed Virgin Mary, would have, would have been perfect in virtue, in obedience, you know, doing everything she was told to do. And, you know, for some, it, it may have been a little strange to have a child that was just so good, you know, so loving, and, and, and just um, so cooperative. And, and in fact, they, after a while, as the child grew, the child would have taught the parents. And, some, and this may have been difficult, uh, you know, at first, because the parents would have had to be perfect around her. Well, this uh, event, the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, reminds us of many things. But one particular aspect is family life and the raising of our children. Now, according to uh, Jewish custom and uh, the ancient traditions of the church, Mary was believed to have been presented in the temple by Saints Joachim and Anne at the age of three years old. You know, it was uh, uh, part of a Jewish uh, a culture that the parents of children would bring their kids to the temple and offer them up continually from their infancy and, and throughout their childhood years. So Mary, of course, Joachim and Anne, would have done this. And throughout the childhood of Mary, according to St. Jerome, Mary spent many, many, many hours, much time, around the temple area. Of course, in, in prayer, um, praying the Psalms and chanting them, uh, and then her home was, uh, was believed to be near the temple, not far away from it. And so, just like any child, she would have done manual labor and you know, things around the house, and then various works of charity. So we are, again, reminded today about raising our children. Um, you know, the, the, these times are difficult times because we, we see so much corruption in the world and so much evil that it could seem almost impossible to raise a child. You know, and, and then there are some, some children who only have one parent. But whether uh, you parents out there, whether you are single parents or you know, both of you there, the church asks us that we raise our children in a holy home, that it be a place of prayer, and that we even call it a domestic church, a little church where children are raised in the faith, educated first and foremost in the faith as children, and then of course uh, helped uh, and being raised in a very healthy and, and holy lifestyle with, with prayer, prayer at meals, uh, prayers before going to bed, prayers before waking up in the morning, and that there be holy objects and images of, in, in our homes so that children are reminded of holy things. I mean, we don't have to, uh, uh, you know, make the, I mean, we could see the walls. We don't have to put holy images all around the walls where we can't see the walls. I mean, but that holy images have a prominent place in the home, perhaps a statue of the um, sacred Heart of Jesus, when we walk in, we can see it. And that way people know that this home is a place of prayer, a home that belongs to God. And having a, a home, uh, or what the church calls a domestic church, is important because the children who are raised in the faith and who are taught very young how to pray and, and basic catechesis, it's usually those children who, become, who have a strong foundation and, and strong belief in the Lord. These children can go out and do great things in society, beginning when they go to school, and then when they eventually go off into the workplace. So 
we should realize the importance of this. So it's good, you know, to turn off the TV once in a while, you know, and, and, uh, and come together as a family, have a little prayer, re remember our, 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 um, our prayer before meals. Uh, perhaps some places you, or some homes you may want to do a little rosary or something. But teaching the children the faith, this is especially very important. And us parents may think, well, you know, I don't even know the faith myself. How can I, can I learn it? Well, it's simple. It's just um, perhaps even reading a little bit of the catechism. And there are so many aids in these, in these times, especially in this time where uh, the mass media is so, is so strong. I mean, there's uh, EWTN on the internet. Uh, there's um, a website for kids. And there's various uh, other um, child um, uh, development and uh, programs uh, sponsored by church organizations that help us teach the faith. Books and you know, TV programs, there's cartoons in the faith and, and stuff like that. These are all helpful for raising our children to become holy men and women. So we have the Blessed Virgin Mary with us. We have her as an example, both as, of course, as for us kids out there, our little children, we can, we can think about the infancy of Mary and how, how holy she was, how, how much she would have known God and, and said her prayers and, and, and how she would have been obedient to God and to, of course, her mom and dad. So we can look at that children, kids. And then as parents, we can look to the Blessed Virgin Mary because she is the mother of all of us, the mother of, church, of the church, the mother of God. And so we can look her, to her divine maternity and see what a caring and loving mother she is. Being with Jesus by his side from his very infancy all the way through the end of his life. Now, so she is a model for all of us, all of us children and all of us parents. A great model of purity and, and holiness, of righteousness. <clears throat> so today we can go to the Blessed Virgin Mary so that she can intercede for us, pray for us, and assist us before the throne of God. And especially if we're having troubles, you know, uh, raising our children or perhaps the kids that have been in trouble, go to Mary. Give it to Mary and entrust your prayers to her. God bless you. Thank you.